Now let's move on to one of the, well, in terms of names, absolutely massive cunt, Valero. Yeah, I mean, yeah, let's, yeah. let's have a look at Vietti's Valero. Uh, what, what's that, 900 bucks a bottle retail now? Uh, is it that much? It is. Oh, oh right. Yeah, I've sold yeah. a bit. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's up right. there. And so. um, the other one we see is Mauro Muscarello, uh, yeah. Gi Giuseppe Muscarello. They're, um, they're quite a few hundred dollars, aren't they? Yeah. Valero. That's yeah. a great wine. I really yeah. like that. That's I've, close enough to my... I've, I've only had it once, and unfortunately it was a late open at the end of the night, and uh, I, I, my recollection of it is not strong. I remember enjoying it, but that's... Yeah, bad. as a, you know, a person uh, <clears throat> brought up into wine, not through the not through the, the, the thunderous wines, but through Burgundy, you yeah. know, the finesse, uh, yeah. Reyes and Gigondas, you know, gr the great Grenaches of flesh and yeah. lightness on their feet. Uh, Valero really grabs me as, yeah. be because of that. It's, it's really uh, the same things that would make a, bur a Burgundy person go, go funny at the knees. Well, tell us about Valero. Where is Valero? So Valero is, is a Castil So we've moved into Castiglione Folletto. Mm -hmm. As a sub-bracket, these next three mm -hmm. are, I, I guess, the three great names of, of uh, the Castiglione Folletto. Stylistically, Castiglione Folletto is really interesting. You can pick it by two things. Again, if you you know if you, if you want some uh, some markers for mass tasting to show off, mm. the um, characteristically the the uh, the perfume, the major perfume of it is uh, for, to me cranberry. Yep. You you get it, and even when the wines are thirty years that. old, you can see ripe cranberries in the wines, and even if everything else looks like it probably comes from Barbaresco. Um, a 30 year old version will still give itself away with cranberry. So on, on the palate, um, Valero does this thing, or Castiglione Folletto does this thing where, uh, uh, if to, to use another good example outside of Burgundy, St. Julian's, yeah, a, gr a, a great crew, for example, yeah. you, you, you taste it once, it once they open, you know, it's one of the slowest wines I've ever struck to In open. Years. Yeah, yeah <laughs> or, or, you know, four hours at least. Um, you, you, once you've tasted and you know you're talking about, you realise you haven't made almost any observations about the tannins, yep. and that's Castiglione Folletto sitting. It, it's regarded as on the tannic side of the of the map, if you like, because you're next to Montfort and then Serralunga, but its tannins and its acid are almost the same compound. This is scientifically not. Uh, no, this no, is no, my no. makeup. I know what you're saying. They're the same thing. Yep. So yep. that they, they're both doing their job at the same time, carrying flavour yep. and the beauty of that structure. Okay, so what David's talking about here is, is getting a little bit next level and um, it, it's getting a bit insane. When you start to see this, um, it, is, it is a hallmark of a very good wine, but there's a very important interplay between tannin, acid, alcohol and the, and the, and the flavours of the wine. Tannin and acid in particular really bounce off each other uh, in, 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 a, in a sort of a, almost a unique relationship as well as with alcohol and the fruit characters. When the tannin and acid balances really well, it becomes one. It, it becomes one really well, and yeah. and you can still have refreshing zingy acid, um, but having only quickly tasted one of these wines, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, and it comes about for me in these wines because both the tannin and the acid have line and length, and both the and particularly with the tannin, there's a depth of tannin and a layering of the tannin um, that I've just seen uh, that that sort of I think is is allowing that to come through and you can see it's beautifully ripe tannin yeah there's nothing yeah, edgy yeah. In, there, in there at all but they're just not overt are they no uh, unlike you know we'll see overt in a in a few minutes when yeah, we yeah, see yeah. these guys and that's that's also uh, they have a they have a payoff that stronger tannin we'll see in a minute has a has a payoff mm -hmm. but here these are all about harmony and persistence mm. and and um, as I said I think in all three of these wines uh, at, at recent tastings, you know, I've had people scratching their heads saying, well, when is this going to finish? When is this wine going to finish? They just keep going and that's their thrill, that's their magic, that's why people have been prepared to pay, merchants have been prepared to pay big money for them, yeah. you know, and they get the big marks. The, the, that Rocky de Castiglione on the palate, insane. The Valero for me on the nose at the moment. I, yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting. I, 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 the the palette of the of the Rocky de Castiglione. Yeah, off tap. I haven't 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 put the Monprovado in in my gob yet, but 
these are clearly quite unique on the nose, and uh, I'm, ju I'm just waiting, and, and, and palette, I'm just wanting to dig into this Mon Provado. So I'm going to give you my two seconds on Mon Provado, and then you can correct everything I've got right. wrong. So no, mate, I, it, it is what it, it is. Yeah, yeah, Whatever yeah. it looks like to you is what it is. Oh, no, because it's you know, just the history. The history. Oh, it, yeah, you've yeah. Got, I mean, Mon Provado has been, always been considered a, a monopole, and a monopole of legendary status. Uh, you know, with Giuseppe Mascarello's Mon Provato, a vertical of that is going to be, I, I, I have been, had the fortune of having a vertical of that. And I'll, I will say that half the wines were good and half the wines weren't. There was a couple of out-of-condition bottles and there was a couple that just weren't, weren't great wines for him. But the ones that were special... Uh, yeah. Absolutely mind-bogglingly. Oh, I've got to say, I'd still be like the kid in the tuck at the tuck shop when it shuts. I'd be pinching. I'd oh. be pinching the duds too to have a look because time after time they're they, so they, well protected by their they their, their tanks. They do pop up. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like the crew. Uh, the done that the number of times I've seen it dismissed by uh, by people. And then all the time, and then oh. it's by far the best wine on the table. So you know, twelve people. There wasn't enough to go back. It was. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, which is a devastating thing yeah. about doing that kind of tasting. But so Mon Provado, mm. a very special vineyard. Now, this is the first time I've heard of another producer having Mon Provado. And what's great about this is it's not just a new acquisition. So tell me about the history of Mon Provado with yeah, Sordo. Yeah, so, so <clears> these guys have had this, uh, and I'll explain what I mean by had it. There are two of these wines... Uh, of the 17 parcels of crew that they own, there's two of them that they don't own outright. Valero is one. They actually share that. They they, they have ownership of it with a, with another family. Mm -hmm. That's fine. They use most of the, the produce, but it is a small, it is a small, I think, 3,000 bottle um, production, Valero. 92%, mm -hmm. uh, if anybody's listening, 92% of it's coming to Australia, correct, in the future. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've, I've scratched my name on the barrel for 17 and 18. <laughs> oh, it's a barrel plus top yeah. wine. <laughs> you can take a man out of the boy. From, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Mon Privato, Mon Privato is the other one. It, it, they've, they've been using it for over four decades. Yeah, yeah wow. so over 40 years. Um, it was owned by, by uh, another family, and the last member of that family uh, passed away in the late 80s, but left the, left the property uh, to the Catholic Church. Yep. So you know that's not, not, like, uh, that's not necessarily a barrier to uh, to, to to making yeah. a deal. No. <laughs> so so yeah. Uh, Catholic Church never make deals. No. What are you talking so about? Giovanni Sordo um, uh, went to them and, and basically rented it from them. Yeah. Yeah. So I imagine the church got what they wanted. They put it in the hands of people that they obviously trusted. So they've got a long. I think it's a you know it's an almost an e endless arrangement. Um, you know, v virtually, it's theirs. You know, uh, Mon Privato was there. It's about nine or ten percent of the of the crew. Mm. Um, the rest is is uh, Giuseppe Mascarello. And, right. and these, these, yeah, sorry, and I'm just going to interrupt for a second. These are really popping in the glass now. They are really coming up. They just just boom blossoming. Yep, they do that. And 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 when you differentiate uh, between. Excellence and excellence. So Mon Provato, so the Rocky de Castiglione and the Villero. What, 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 what's, what's the, the thing that, uh, that, that stands out for you? Yeah, I think Mon Privato has a gamey element to it, um, whether it's a mushroom or a, fl or a flesh or something like that. You know, that yeah. Gevry Chambertin sort of gaminess over time mm -hmm. and it shows it it's showing it fairly fairly uh, already in this that maybe it's slightly vegemite even or marmite um so that's uh, otherwise you know the profile of all of them is is fading fading flowers a cranberry fading flowers roses yep. fading flowers is an interesting one it's it's another giveaway to me of um of two things. Do you it, mean like it, cut flowers that are just starting to tire? Yeah, so that that, va that vase that you're about to throw out, but it looks so good, and it's actually throwing this hedonistic, yeah. slightly, you know, deteriorating perfume. But I'm I'm just not going to chuck them out yet because yeah. those roses are bloody gorgeous. Yep. It's a smell you get in um, uh, in Saint Emilion, for example, and it's a mm -hmm. it gives it gives the Saint Emilion away in a, in a tasting if you if the you know if the lack of Cabernet hasn't you know uh, picked it. As a right yep. bank, you know the the, yep. the 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 fading flowers. Cheval Blanc has got it. Uh, Parvis got it, for example. Yep. Um, 
And those first two, well, all three of them have that sort of range of things. Um, uh, cherry skin, you, you know the skinsy sort of character you get uh, in Torriga Nacional. Yeah. You often think of it as the Portuguese tawny yep. port smell, but it's Torriga. Yeah. It's Torriga yep. Nacional, yep. To, to me anyway. It's the backbone. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's one of the other smells, and you get it. You get that fleshiness, that skinsy thing in, in uh, Burgundy as well. I'm going to tell you, guys, one of the reasons this works, and I think if you, if you read any literature from a perfumer, They'll talk about this, uh, anyone that's good and making and putting together a perfume. You've got to balance out those perfumed characters, those generous fruit characters with something that's a bit earthy, a bit savoury. It's got a bit of animal in it. Otherwise, it's just too sickly sweet. And these wines are doing, well, like, Barolo does that beautifully in general. But these wines are doing it particularly yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So, so Valero is light on its feet. It's essentially, even though today it's looking quite ripe and fleshy to me, um, uh, this is generally my favourite wine just because of that lightness of, mm. uh, of style and everything is, 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 is gently layered, but it keeps, it keeps going all the way through. Rocky is much more powerful and muscular. Mm. Um, it's actually got, it's, it, it, opens, it keeps opening up to all sorts of things. Right now I get a thing that uh, somebody at a tasting in Sydney, ah, this has got new oak. It's, this has got new oak. It's, there's a slightly coconut character. Ikem. Think he came. Yeah, I almost saw a sappiness <laughs> yeah. to it. Um, I didn't really see a coconutiness to it, but there, there is almost a oh, sort of a... sappiness runs through all of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, look, there's a that's my and... cherry skin, probably. Yeah, maybe that's a that's a problem with descriptors. Sometimes it uh, it, it's one man's cherry skins, one man's sappiness, uh, or another man's sappiness. But um, it's interesting. I, I really hate comparing Barolo to Burgundy di directly. But if I was going to do it, I'd do it with this Valero with Chambol. Chamo Musini. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and that is, I mean, that is just, that is an, I, I love that wine right now. Tingle City, yeah. Um, the the Roque has got a, 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 some generosity to it at the moment, um, and, and it's perhaps got a bit more depth of tannin um, to it. It's, it's not saying that the Valero doesn't have depth, it's just saying it's got more. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it is a much more muscular wine. Yeah, but it, it's, it's a little bit, um, a little bit disjointed at the moment. You can, you can clearly see, and this is being super critical, you can clearly see it's going to come together. Undoubtedly going to come together, and, and perhaps even by the time I, I taste this tonight, it will be together. So it's not a matter of... It, 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 years you'll be sick of your by tonight. You'll want, you, yeah. you want some Jurif or something. Well, I'm drinking like, Burgundy this afternoon. Tonight? It's a Benjamin, Benjamin Laurie this uh -huh, afternoon. That's right. so, you know, so, but I, I really... Really enjoying the Mon Provado together. Uh, it's it's so together at the moment. It's it's, it's looking lovely, and that, and those savoury characters that are coming through. So, perfume to savouriness. Uh, it's just this is just an. I mean, this in itself is this is truly a masterclass, David. So you know, thank, thank, thanks for bringing worries. them along. I mean, yeah. this is just. Insane. Hey, what a way to earn a living. Well, it's it's not bad. Yakking, uh, yakking a, Barolo. There's a, there's a, there's some perks of the job, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 